Hello, it's me Austin, and if you're new to my channel, I am a designer with a passion for fashion and world of art. And this is episode 3 of my regalia series. Last episode, I showed you how I made the coronation orb a part of the iconic royal crown jewels. In this episode, I will show you how I made the remaining of the decoration and ornaments to be put on my royal king dress. The royal medals, the Victorian order badge, the gorgeous gorgeous star, the aiguillettes, and the belt buckle. You might be wondering what the hell are these items that I've just talked about? Well, let's dive in, shall we? First, the aiguillettes. The word aiguillette itself is French for a small needle, and is the tip which covers the ends of cords. By extension, the term also refers to an ornamental braided cord with decorated metal tips, usually cone-shaped. It's worn on the uniform of government officials or members of the royal family to represent a particular rank or status, and can be seen in many countries around the world, a notable example of homework copying. The shiny gold ornaments are mostly seen in various ceremonial events and marching bands. There are several origin stories to the purpose of aiguillettes. Some suggest that they were pins used to secure a shoulder protector on the plate armor of a knight. Nowadays, Aiguillettes are solely decorative. The belt buckle. As seen on many portraits and photographs, the monarch and other senior members of the British royal family wear a belt as part of their uniform. This is called officer belt or sword belt because its main purpose is to carry the navy sword, which I also made in episode 1 of this series. The main focus, however, is on this beautiful belt buckle, which is made of brass. The design of the buckle's face resembles the insignia of the British Royal Navy Chief Petty Officer, the Order of the Garter Badge. This is a shiny, exclusive badge worn by knights and ladies of the Garter, the world's oldest national order of knighthood that still exists today. So who started it? The name is Edward III of England. He founded a knighthood in the 1340s as a reward for distinction in combat. Its membership is extremely limited, consisting of the Sovereign, the Prince of Wales, and not more than 24 full members known as Companions. Members were all male until 1901 when one of King Edward VII's first acts as king was to admit his wife, Alexandra, to the knighthood. The badge itself is a silver star of 8 principal points with a red St. George cross within the garter. The inscription on the blue garter is the motto of the order, and is Anglo-Norman for shame on him who thinks evil of it. Royal Victorian Order Badge The cross I'm replicating is the insignia of the Royal Victorian Order, a dynastic order of knighthood established in 1896 by Queen Victoria as a way for her to personally thank and honor people who had helped her directly. The cross consists of a white enamel multi-cross, an oval of crimson enamel with the royal cipher of Queen Victoria in gold. The imperial state crown can be seen above the ribbon. So my plan to recreate these ornaments is to first create the 3D models, then 3D print out these models, then to cover them in gold foil and silver foil to simulate metal, and then some final finishing touches with acrylic paint. I built my models in the 3D building software called SketchUp. I spent around 3 weeks to complete all of these 3D models, and I'm glad to say that if you would like to make these ornaments for yourself, you wouldn't have to go through all of this headache, because these 3D models, specifically the SDL file, are available over at my Patreon shop for you to purchase. And they are ready to 3D print so you can get straight into the fun part of crafting. After the 3D models are completed, I send them over to a local 3D printing shop because I don't own a 3D printing machine. And here are the final products. There's one last element of the ornaments that I haven't mentioned and that is the metal. I'm not great at all at reading metals, so I had decided to buy some props metals on AliExpress, which to me look pretty close to the real things. I tried to choose the ones that closely resembled the original design of the real medals, eliminating designs that clearly represent the military of other nations such as the US or Germany. This one even has the portrait of the queen on it. Let's start with the Order of Garter Star. 
I had designed a 3D model to have a round dimple in the back to perfectly fit an 18mm brooch back. Although I have to point out that the dimple should have been placed higher. I originally put it in the center, and this is what happened. Gravity kept pulling the star down. But don't worry though, because I later adjusted the position of the dimple on the 3D model. The dimple is now higher, so that should counter gravity to keep the star upright. The first step is to apply the gilding adhesive all over the surface where I wanted the foil to stick. I used a round paintbrush to apply the adhesive evenly. You should only have a very thin layer of adhesive on the object. If you accidentally apply too much, don't stress. Just dab the excess off with a cotton swab. The adhesive I was using is water-based, which is the best choice in most cases. I haven't tried oil-based one, but I read that if you're applying gilding foil to oil painting, you have to use oil-based adhesive. After I've applied the adhesive, it is essential to wait until it's turned clear and tacky, and that usually takes between 15 and 30 minutes. Now it was time to apply gilding foil to these babies. For the Gotta Star and the Victorian Cross, since they are silver, I used silver leaves for mine, which I'm sure were imitation silver. The leaves come in pages like this, each leafing is incredibly thin and lightweight, so I would not want to do this outside in the wind, or have fans blowing at my workspace, unless I want to have a confetti shower. I used the paper that came with the leafing to lift it to the gilding side, then simply glided it over the object. I continue laying the foil on until the surface was completely covered. Don't stress over having wrinkles or overlapping foil. The excess will simply be burnished up in the next step. What truly matters is that you don't leave any spot uncovered. Now I took a big soft brush, like a makeup powder brush, and gently tap and press the foil on the easy to see. I'm having a stroke. Gently tap and press the foil on the adhesive. And the adhesive. And the adhesive. <coughs> Sorry about that. The next step was to burnish the foil. I took a small and stiffer brush and vigorously, but in a controlled manner, brushed all over the surface to burnish and remove the excess foil. You start to see this lumpy mess of foil magically turn into a shiny and smooth silver finish. It was truly a rewarding and satisfying sight of the whole process, which is why I love foil gilding so much. I'm so fascinated by the world of 3D printing. If you have some basic 3D modeling skills, you can literally create anything out of thin air with minimal effort. It's a huge game changer and I totally get why many artists and DIYers have already invested in having their own 3D printing machines and workshops. Now for the gold details on the star and the cross, I simply repeated the process of gilding. But this time, I applied the adhesive only to the area I wanted to be golden. A liner brush or a fine round brush was recommended to achieve the best precision. And of course, I needed to wait again for the adhesive to turn tacky. Now I used imitation gold foil. These were the leftover gold flakes from my other project. For small detail gilding, this is a great way to use up my scraps and crumbs and flakes.
and shiny. The next step is simple and self-explanatory, but it really pulls the whole look together. With bamboo skewer, although you can use a liner brush, I painted on the red and blue detail of these ornaments with acrylic paint. I wanted to wear the Victorian Order Cross as a pendant over my red tie, so I attached a golden bell. Two down, three to go. The aggregates and the back buckle are all gold, which makes the work easier. I simply repeated the foil gilding steps I've demonstrated earlier. It's pretty interesting to me that unlike a typical belt buckle, the Royal Navy buckle comes in two parts. A rectangular bar is attached to the left of the round face for the belt strap to be threaded through, and there's another separate bar for the other end of the belt strap. On the back of the buckle is a hook where the loose end bar can be hooked onto the buckle to fasten the belt. Although this was a fun process, I have to warn you though, after doing gilding, the entire room would be littered with flakes of gold and silver, no matter how tidy you worked. It's the same as those pesky litters, you'd be finding bits of them everywhere, including some of your body parts, for the next few months. And also for this exact reason, it's a good idea to wear a mask, so you wouldn't inhale in these very light and tiny flakes of metal, because after all, these gilding foils are made from actual metal. A vacuum cleaner is another best buddy here. These ornaments would be placed onto my royal military style suit to complete my king looks. I can't wait to show you how I make the whole costume at the end of this regalia series, so stay tuned. And for now, thank you for watching, and goodbye.